in the previous chapters, we've talked a lot about how to understand and start messaging to your crowd so that you're actually gathering a crowd. And now we're gonna go into what it actually takes to build a great crowdfunding campaign. I know, finally. <laughs> Okay, listen. If there's nothing else that you take away from this whole thing, there are two main tenets of successful campaign building, whether for crowdfunding or distribution, that you have to know. Number one, momentum. Number two, inevitability of success. Momentum. It is your job to keep the momentum going for your career and for your campaign. Right. And this is where it's really, really important that you get to 25 or 30% funded in the first few days of your campaign because you're showing that there is an inevitability of success, that this thing is going to happen and it's going to be great. Now, what we know from the crowdfunding statistics is that campaigns that reach 30% in their first week, 80% uh, of those are successful. So all this stuff that we've been talking about, about building your crowd in advance, that's one of the really important ways you're gonna guarantee yourself that you're gonna hit at least 30% in that first week. It's also why it's really important that you don't plead and that you don't beg, because that doesn't make anybody excited or believe that you're actually gonna get your thing made and it's gonna be exciting. If something is inevitably successful, you shouldn't have to beg people to pay attention to it. So put yourself in your audience's shoes for a moment. Let's say you visit a campaign page that's two weeks into the campaign and they're only 2% funded. That tends to suggest only like one of two things. And the first is these people are not doing any outreach whatsoever. There's no inevitability of success in that project. Other piece is that it might be that their friends and family or the people who know them the closest know that they're crooks and they're not gonna do what they say they're gonna do. So that's zero inevitability of success. The other thing that we know is that 30% is like this magic number where strangers who visit your page start to get comfortable funding. So the momentum is also what suggests to total strangers who are discovering you for the first time during your crowdfunding campaign are likeliest to say, I think these people people are going to be successful and I'm going to sign on board. The first question a lot of you will ask is how much should I raise? Is there a magic number out there that is the thing that I will be successful if I run that campaign? And the truth is there isn't. It's very specific to who you are, what is the movie you're making, and how many people know about it already. Perhaps the most important question to ask yourself is how much do I need to deliver on the promises in this pitch? And that should be the central focus of how you determine how much you're raising. That means actually you have a lot of flexibility. It could be that to deliver on the promises in your pitch, getting through the end of production, for example. And that's less than what it takes to get through post and festivals and distribution. And what we see very often is filmmakers build staged financing plans where they raise for production, they raise for post or festivals and distribution. Filmmakers never understood how much it costs to apply to and attend festivals, Yeah, right? So festival applications can be expensive, but are a vital part of your distribution and audience building plan. Um, and not all festivals will be able to fly you out, but those opportunities to screen your film in front of audiences you'd never otherwise get to meet are vital. So you also wanna build in travel costs. And oh, by the way, considering that you'll probably live with your film for five to seven years, don't forget to budget for money for yourself to live. We will put links in here to some examples we have of filmmakers very successfully using this staged financing. But the, again, the most important piece is raising enough to deliver on the promises in your pitch. And something that's really important to us is that you really value this tool of crowdfunding. Because if you don't, it will go away. We want people to be really clear on how much they're raising and how much they're offering. Because if you need $50,000 to make your film and you raise $10,000, you are not gonna make the film that you wanna make and you're not gonna deliver it in the way that you promised. And you won't be happy and your audience won't be happy. Part of the cool thing that we've built into Seed and Spark is that when you crowdfund with us, you offer rewards, but also we offer rewards in the form of sparks. And those sparks can be used to watch movies on the streaming platform. That means that every time you crowdfund, before you've made your movie, you're giving your audiences access to lots of other filmmakers' films. You are inherently saying, I understand that there's a huge community that I'm a part of, and I'm gonna help every time I crowdfund 
give my audiences greater access to that community. And the last piece of how much is make sure that whatever dollar amount you choose doesn't give you panic. <laughs> that is very important. It should feel like stressful and like it's gonna be a challenge to get there, but it shouldn't make you panic. That means that you've set it too high. So something important to understand about Seed and Spark is, a, is the average uh, project size is around $20,000. Other platforms, it's under $10,000 in film and video. And part of that is because we really push our filmmakers to be really prepared to campaign, and that tends to give them more confidence and less panic about the dollar amount they're raising for. A lot of filmmakers are not using crowdfunding to cover the entire budget of their film, or certainly are not using a crowdfunding campaign to cover every stage. They're either breaking up their crowdfunding into stages, or they're raising to do things they never thought they'd be able to do. So that's our bit on how much you should raise, and in the next video we're gonna get into your pitch video.